What is up guys, Andy Forestine Ren here and welcome back to another video. Today is a day where I have to talk to you guys where I'm going to have to take a step back for now. Yep, you know it's serious when there's no B-roll straight into the video. Today is going to be a sit down and chatty style vlog because I'm going to be talking about why I'm having to take a step back for now. What does that mean? And then we're going to break this video down into three main chapters just so that I can give you guys a bit of a better breakdown as to what's going on. So what do I mean by having to take a step back? Well, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I know the video title does seem rather dramatic. The videos will continue, but sadly my running has had to come to a standstill. I have decided as of Monday that I shall not run again this week. I'm going to explain everything right now, hence why I'm having to take a step back from my running and deal with this injury. It's just not getting better. So this video is going to contain how I've been since the last video you saw and why I've had to take a step back. I'm going to talk about the recovery, what steps I've already taken, what steps I'm taking to recover, and then hopefully at the end when I anticipate coming back to running. So the last video you guys saw on the channel was the double header, which was the running with Lee outside, which obviously didn't go to plan. And then the one hour treadmill run, which really did go to plan. It was great. And the whole idea last week was when I came back to running, I was going to use the treadmill for low impact. I could kind of tell I wasn't quite right, but I wanted to kind of test and see that if I did run on the treadmill, if I would still gradually keep getting better and it wasn't doing me any detrimental harm whilst I was on there. And I felt like throughout the week it was getting better and I felt this is good. I can start to build up some aerobic fitness again, get those easy runs in, running to heart rate, not really pace because paces and heart rate were quite off on the treadmill. So making sure I was always sticking in the 130 heart rate and every single run, no run went higher than 130 and every run averaged in and around that mid to late 130s. So I was feeling really, really good. Roll on Friday, did the road run, did not feel good. That hurt from the off, pretty much within the first five, 10 minutes. The tib ant, which is the muscle that runs down the outside of the leg, is what I was compensating with during the injury. So I did the calf in and around week 10, 10 and a half of my speed block last year. I continually persisted through it right through to finish off week 12. So probably ran about 10 days with this dodgy calf. That combined with the tib ant, which was compensating for the calf, um, has got me into this massive mess and actually now the calf is fine we'll cover come to that in a second it's the tib ant that is the issue as I said that's the muscle that runs down the outside of the leg that is really sore so obviously I did that and that tib ant was not happy at all fast forward to Sunday took a day's rest Saturday felt really good on Sunday did the one hour treadmill run felt great no pain before no pain after no pain during it was great I ramped the pace up a little bit that was the first run where I pushed over the 130 heart rates just to see how I felt and I was really really happy fast forward past dinner time my calf started to throb and I thought uh, probably because I pushed it a little bit today nothing too serious it will be okay we'll see how we are in the morning sadly that ache gradually turned into tightness, gradually turned into more pain. I woke up on Monday morning and I was in quite a bit of pain with the calf, to be perfectly honest with you. I said to myself last week, and I did capture it in last week's vlog, when I was coming back, starting with the treadmill, I will run this week on the treadmill and I will assess, assess to see how I feel this week as to what I do. And I had that sinking feeling in my stomach that I knew if I hopped on the treadmill on Monday morning and started this process all over again, my recovery is going to get delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And I knew this was not the solution to the problem I knew deep down, as much as it hurt me to make that decision, that I just had to stop and let this issue settle. In hindsight, I kind of feel like the treadmill, as much as it was fantastic and is, and I'm going to be using it a lot more for my training this year, it kind of masked the injury which was highlighted when I went out for that road run on Friday with it being so painful. So I could run pain-free on the treadmill, that's fine. As soon as I did any type of running outside, it was a complete no-go. So that's where I'm at at the moment, as of right now, which is Wednesday when I'm recording this. Not sure when you guys are going to see it, whether it's Thursday or Friday, but as of Wednesday, things are feeling so, so much better. I'm feeling really grateful that I've made this decision, and we'll talk a little bit more about how and when I anticipate coming back from running. But let's now talk about what I'm doing to recover. Okay, so in the previous video, I showed you some of the, well, I showed you the massage gun and the Pure Sport CBD muscle and joint balm. 
that I have been using uh, on the injury, which I am continuing to use. That is, uh, those are two items along with heat and ice that I'm doing, except I've now decided to take that heat and ice to a new level. Don't know if you guys remember, if you've been hanging around the ch channel for a while, back in the summer, I had a little bit of a knee niggle um, and I was doing hot, cold and hot baths. So basically like ice baths and then hot baths for the heat and ice. I've progressed onto that now, rather than just a bag of peas and a wheat bag to heat up, I've decided to go for the bath. That has made a lot of difference, I feel, because right now, as of Wednesday, I feel like the best I've felt since the injury, even like last week, I feel the best. I've, there is one, the tiniest little nick in the tib ant, and that's it. Like, I feel tomorrow could be the first day that I'm completely pain-free. Fingers crossed, if not Friday, the way it keeps progressing. I'm doing that once a day of an evening, and my routine at the moment is pure sports CBD balm and uh, massage gun in the morning. Doing some core, uh, not core, some glute uh, activational exercises like glute bridges, single leg, um, single leg glute bridges, squats, single leg squats, everything to fire the glutes to make sure everything is firing. Because again, that's another half of the issue. If your glutes aren't firing, you're gonna be compensating. I've already been compensating using that tip band and other muscles that shouldn't have been doing what they were doing during that injury. I need to make sure that when I come back, I'm firing on all cylinders, making sure everything's activated and fired up, ready to go. So I've been doing that throughout the day, just once. I'm not going crazy, just once. And then of an evening, I'm doing the cold bath, hot bath, and then the muscle balm and the massage gun. So I'm doing the muscle balm and the massage gun in the morning and night, but in the night I'm adding in the cold and hot baths. I'm not going crazy with it. I'm not doing it three or four times a day. I'm not doing the heat and icing lots because naturally I want my body to recover at its own pace. I'm just trying to add these things in to kind of help things along. But at the same time, I know if I rush it and do too much, I could be giving myself a false sense of security when I wake up one day and feel great, but actually it's just on the surface it feels great, underneath it's not. So that's what I'm doing. And the second major thing and the hardest thing I've had to do for this recovery is I have pulled out of the, the Winter Speedway 10K, uh, not this weekend coming, but the weekend after. I knew that if I left my name in that hat for that race, even if I had come back gently next week, for example, if I was able to run next week and just doing 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, I know I could not trust myself to go there and run sensibly. I just couldn't do it. I would go out there and race hard and I could set myself back even further. That was a really hard decision to make because I don't run many 10Ks. This is a flat and fast local race full of a stacked field. I missed it last year. I was desperate to do it this year but I've had to say no. And there's a very strong chance the weekend after when I'm booked in for the Staverton 10 miler that I will also pull out of that one. I've kind of accepted it. I've left my name in the hat for that one, just playing this week by ear. And then we'll see what happens next week. If next week is no good, I will 100% pull my name out of that one. Meaning I then have no races, no pressure. The weight is lifted off my shoulders and I don't have to worry because I... Let me tell you something, having a race booked in when you have an injury is dangerous because you're constantly thinking, oh, well, if I can just get a little bit fitter, I might just be able to race that. And then you start playing mind games with yourself and you think, oh, I can, yeah, I can get there. And you know what? Even if it's bad, I'll just take some ibuprofen and it'll be OK. I'll just race six on a race. It's dangerous. I'm dangerous in that situation. I know I am. So I spoke to my wife and I said, I think I'm going to pull out. And she said, that's the most sensible thing you've ever said in your life. <laughs> so I'll take that as a compliment. I've pulled my name out of the hat and I will probably end up doing the same with Staverton if next week is no good as well. So those are the things I'm doing for my recovery. And finally, when do I anticipate being able to run again? Well, let me just clear this up now and I'm going to speak from the heart and I'm going to speak openly and honestly. I'm scared. Um, I have run for over seven years now. January the 1st was my anniversary. I'm now into my seventh year of running. And in seven years, I have not had an injury like this. I've been laid off for no more than a week. Um, this is frustrating. And for any of you who have soft, uh, suffered calf issues, I feel for you. The calf is an absolute nightmare to recover from. And I'm genuinely scared. Having come back last week and it not got better, I'm scared about coming back again and it not being better. So what I anticipate doing and what I'm going to try and do when I'm ready is I'm gonna go out 
for a road run and I'm not going to use a treadmill because I've never used a treadmill before on a recovery and if I can't handle my usual style and type of run which is a road run and don't get me wrong it will be a short road run half an hour maximum but if I can't handle that I'm not ready and that will allow me not to kid myself by jumping on the treadmill going oh everything's fine thank goodness um, I will go out there and test it on the road. But I am nervous, genuinely scared and nervous that I will be set back again. So what I need to do right now is I've got some tests in my head that I'm gonna be doing along the way to make sure that I'm ready for my first run. What's that gonna be? Well, the first things first, if, if, fingers crossed, Tomorrow is the first completely 100% pain-free day. Bearing in mind today is a 95 to 98% pain-free. Just a tiny little nick in the side that's kind of scratching and itching. If that's all gone and it feels good, then I want to wait at least three days, if not more. I don't want to even think about running again until next Monday. So if I, that's Thursday, I'm gonna be waiting all of Thursday, all of Friday, all of Saturday, all of Sunday, try Monday. If that pain isn't gone, on Thursday or even Friday and it goes on Saturday, I'm gonna wait until Wednesday or Thursday to try it. I want a minimum of three days, preferably four or five, completely pain-free to make sure everything has settled before I even try to run again. In those three to five days, I'm gonna be doing various exercises, just going out for a walk somewhere, breaking into a little run, seeing how it feels for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, making sure there's nothing there. I'm gonna be doing some lunges, some squats, some jumping around in the garden like a lunatic, making sure my leg can handle the load because I'm doing things like that now and I'm feeling where those aches and pains are. So I need to make sure all of those are gone before I even consider running again. So this comes into the whole I'm scared bracket. It's I need to get rid of all of this before I start again. I'm happy now. I'm at peace in my mind and you know, loss of fitness, whatever you want to say. I'm not worried. What I'm now worried about is coming back again and failing again and having to wait even longer. So this has to be the time that's right. When I come back and do a test run, if it's not right, I stop straight away. I'm not doing another week. I'm not doing another week of testing, jumping on the treadmill, that's it. If it doesn't go right, I back off again, wait some more time, see how we go again. So everything will be done in a very tippy-toe fashion. At the earliest, it's gonna be Monday. <sighs> From there, we'll just see how we go. I don't anticipate running every day. I'm gonna go for Monday. If it, Monday's okay, I'm gonna go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Have a day off in between each run. If everything's okay, I'll try Saturday. Do a back-to-back -back run, make sure that's okay. If that's all right, then I'll look the week after to go back up to five days or stick to four days, depending on how I feel. All of these will be easy runs next week. There'll be nothing more. I might try and moderate on the weekend if everything's okay. This is how I came back from my knee injury. This is how I'll come back from this one. Taking it nice and easy, nice and slowly. So that's the plan. As I said, if I'm not ready Monday, I just wait three to five days minimum of pain-free walking around, jumping around, being an idiot before I even try it. So there we go, that's where I'm at, that's what's happening. I am having to take a step back for the moment. Hopefully it's for the better. And if I can encourage anyone anything, don't be fooled by the treadmill. <laughs> Taking a step back is needed sometimes to fix issues. Um, as much as it is the hardest decision and it really was a super hard decision, it's worth it. It will be worth it in the long run. For me, I now have bigger goals London in October. Also, I'm now gonna have a massive restructure of my spring. I was going for a fast half marathon at the end of March. I'm still gonna run those half marathons. I'm not gonna be in the shape I want to be in. So I'm now gonna sit down when I am successfully back after the first week of running and sit down and reevaluate my goals, look at some April and May races, give myself a bit of time to build back up, take things steady and easy. So there we go, that's it. If you made it to this point in the video, I really appreciate you listening to me ramble on, but I had to get all of this off my chest and articulate it to you guys in the, most, in the best way that I possibly could. So there we go, that's it from me, and I hope it, this may resonate with some of you guys that have been suffering from injuries and stuff. If it has, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all of your support on Instagram. I announced this on Instagram a couple of days ago. You've given me some great messages. I appreciate it all. And for you guys on here as well, thank you so much. Hopefully I'm making the right decision. Well, a lot of you guys have said I am. I believe I am. 
waiting is going to be the best thing. If I carry on, I'm just going to make it worse, delay my running and not be able to enjoy those races. I want to come back fighting fit, do fart leg runs on the trails, tempo runs around the cycle track. I miss those trails. That's what I'm aiming for. That's my goal. So there we go. That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this one, please do give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.